Alright, hey, it's Troy from the Bigfoot Diaries. We're here on the bus with the Steep Canyon Rangers. We have Woody Platt, we have Charles, and we have Mike. Hey, howdy. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the bus. <laughs> it's a nice bus. We should have cleaned up. Yeah, we should, <laughs> we should have straightened up a little bit. <laughs> so how's the tour going so far? The tour's going really well. This is our uh, fourth stop. Fourth yeah. stop. So it just started. Yeah, it's, well, we do, uh, this is the tour we're doing with Steve Martin, and we're doing the last 10 to 12 days of each month. So this is our second leg. Okay. Stop. Gotcha. So in the whole scheme of the tour, it'd be like our 16th stop. There's a fiddle player. Come There's on a fiddle player. Hi. This is Nikki. Hey. So you're from Brevard, North yeah, Carolina? Yeah, Brevard, yes. Brevard. And yes, Western North Carolina. Yeah, We're all from right around there. Charles is actually in Asheville, and Nikki's in Asheville, but Western North Carolina, between Asheville and Brevard, that's where we all are. And Transyl Transylvania County, yeah. you understand. Uh -huh. yeah. So what's, what's the significance of that? I have no idea. It just the word Transylvania means like through the woods or in the across woods, the across the mountain, some woods. Yeah, yeah, right across there. the woods. So I mean, it, you know, I don't think it has anything to do with vampires or anything. But of course, that's where Dracula was from. Right. And you guys, did you guys meet on the campus of North Carolina, or? Yeah, Charles and Graham, our banjo player, who isn't here at the moment. Um, we met in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, uh, in college and uh, started the band there, and Mike and I grew up together uh, in Brevard, so that na he naturally kind of fell in with us. And Nikki um, has found us through a friend when he was in Boston at Berkeley School of Music, and relocated to Asheville to join the band like eight years ago. So we still call him the freshman, but he's been with us eight years. Right on. Mm -hmm. So who was your, as a guitar player, who was your early influences? Doc Watson was the, my first kind of segue into this stuff. Also this, around this the music. Record. Yeah, I mean, he's been with Vanguard. He's been with a lot of labels, but and we just lost him. But um, a record called Remembering Merle that I got from my mother, actually. And then probably Tony Rice and some of the more modern guys. And then traditionally Lester Flatt and Jimmy Martin have a real cool rhythm guitar style that I, that I like. Have you always played the bluegrass style? Yeah, I just that's all I've really done. We just kind of learned together. I, I didn't even really have any aspirations to, to play music more than just sitting around in the dorm room until Charles got a bass fiddle and, and Graham got a banjo and we, we were uh, such good friends. I was like, I'm hang out with those guys and play some music. And so I give them uh, credit for dragging me down this path. Or, just or, dragging or blame Kicking and screaming. <laughs> and just and just dragging you down in general. Yeah, just dragging me down in general. <laughs> so what, what, like, what, is the, um, like, what is the biggest challenge you guys face as traveling musicians? Um, one of the biggest challenges, but we're doing, I think we're doing pretty well, is just staying healthy and getting a lot of rest, and, you know, eating smart, and just taking care of ourselves, you know, because we got to, you know, we have 10, 10 shows in a row maybe, or nine shows in a row, something like that. And, you know, you gotta be able to sing every night and play. You wanna, you know, be loose. You don't wanna get tendonitis or, you know, lose your voice or you wanna be well rested and everything. And, you know, that I think that's a, a big challenge for for doing these long, long tours like that when you're having to do so much singing and playing every night. I think we're doing pretty well. Have you guys been able to explore Des Moines at all or just kinda? Of, we, we all went on a walk about today, go on the market. Did you go down to the farmer's market? Right yeah, on. very cool. Did you, any impressions of Des Moines? First time's here? Uh, we flew in here just recently to play a small mini tour of the dates in Iowa uh, okay. without Steve. Um, we ended up playing in Davenport okay. and in Dubuque. Um, so, both on the. So, you've been in Iowa before? Yeah, the eastern shore of Iowa, so to speak. Yeah, somebody made a comment last night that we've never had a bad show in Iowa. We haven't been here that much, but every time we've been here, we've had great shows. So, on the Rare Bird Alert album, you uh, did a song that Paul McCartney sang called Best Love. How did that come about? Well, Steve wrote that song for his wife, and uh, I think on the demo version, uh, Steve Martin actually sung it himself. And uh, were a couple of different singers he had in mind, if I recall. Tom Waits was even in the offing, uh, or, or is one of the possibilities of people that might come in and, and sing that track. Yeah, that we might ask. Oh, or that Steve might ask yeah. to sing that track because uh, I think he, he wasn't sure that his voice was the right texture for that mm -hmm. for that uh, lead vocal and, uh, and and up to that point, really, Steve's uh, vocal role in the band had largely been, um, you know, participating as um, 
as more of a comedic, uh, you know, like the song Jubilation Day, for mm-hmm. instance, which we made a, a movie for. He, he says that, too, in his show, that he can get away with a comedy song. Um, but when it comes to the real heartfelt stuff, I think that's changing a little bit. And he's starting to sing more. Uh, there's a new murder ballad that he sings in the show that, uh, that uh, is really great and works very worked well for his voice, I think. Um, so at that time, I think maybe his own reluctance to sing his own you know, heartfelt love song uh, through his own vocal cords uh, was the reason that he, he asked Sir Paul. And uh, we actually got to play both instruments and sing uh, in simultaneity with Sir Paul without ever meeting him. Because oh. we recorded the track, left a hole in the middle, and then nailed it off. And so it came back and had a hey. voice on it. Hey, how's it going? Oh, I'm sorry. We're doing a webcast. You want to say hey to the webcast? Hello, everyone. This is our production <laughs> engineer, sound man, tour oh, manager, Josh bringing everyone. all the necessities. Everything. <laughs> it's like vodka and Advil. It's like vodka and Advil. <laughs> <laughs> Having Paul McCartney was a real treat for the record. Uh, just to, you know, for us to actually have, a, for there to be a bluegrass album in existence that he's singing one of the songs. It's I was going to cool say, it's not too many times. Yeah, it's a cool thing for the genre. And, so speaking of Rare Bird Alert, I noticed that the new album, in, in contrast to that, it seems to be more refined, more, maybe it's just tighter. Is that on purpose, or is that... Uh, nobody knows Nobody you. knows, yeah. They're, they're, they're almost separate bands. Okay. So yeah, I, I wouldn't different. even say you could compare one, because the quintet of just us, we're playing all our own music that we're writing ourselves, and the sextet with Steve is all his music, and it's arranged somewhat by us, but it's more, it's a different collaborative effort. It's almost apples and oranges, but uh, I, I take it you like Nobody Knows You, the new record. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, it's very tight. I think the biggest difference is that we wrote those songs that are on ours, and Steve wrote the ones that are on the Rare Bird. Okay, I wasn't aware of that. So it's a little bit of different style in, in writing, but you know, there are similarities because we're, it's the same guys singing and playing them, but, um, but it is. It's, it's, di- it's different. It's, what's really cool about this whole collaboration with Steve is we kind of get to be two bands. Mm-hmm. We get to be the Steve Carrangers, and we have all, all different songs and songs we wrote, and then we get to play with Steve, and it's it's all songs he wrote, and it's completely different, different show, and, and it's really cool. You guys do King Cut? We, we used to. Yeah. We used to. We don't do it so much anymore. We, you know, when we first started touring with Steve, and, and we did it every show, and I think he kind of wants to separate himself from it. Right. He's taken this music thing very seriously, mm-hmm. and he's very interested in it. Uh, he loves it. You know, we, we're going to probably do this for several more years and make more records. And for some reason, he, we I think we really enjoyed playing King Cut. I know I did. Yeah, I think now in this, but in this sort of yeah third year of touring, the fans that are coming to the shows really understand that they're going to a music concert, right? And that it isn't going to be you know the Steve with the rabbit the, or the, the arrow through his head we I mean there were fans who would literally show up at some of our early shows with Steve like in 2009 dressed in full white suit with spray painted silver hair and arrow through the head you know it was like to you know like it was a almost a Rocky Horror Picture Show kind of event uh, dress up like the guy that you're going to see I don't know um, but people are pretty aware now that this is a it's, a it's a serious show in terms of the music but Steve is still funny why, you know, in between songs, because after all, he's your MC, mm-hmm. and the guy can't not be funny. Right. So he's, uh, you know, it's the yeah, best of both worlds, I it's, think. It's billed as a music and comedy show. So you met him through the Prairie Home Companion, is that correct? Is that how you guys got paired up? That was one of our first uh, shows with him, um, but we got paired up by his wife. Okay. Uh, we, we were friends with her before they were married, and so when they got married, she introduced, she paired us up, just said, hey, you should meet my friends, and she just, it was like, you know, introducing two people, she just put us together, and it clicked really fast, it was natural, and the music went really well, so it just happened to be where he was about to start a tour anyway, or he needed to, he made a record, and found out he needed a tour, and we happened to be the band that he just met, and the timing was perfect. Right on. Well, you guys set it off, I mean, was it? One of those magical things you guys start playing together. It's like, wow, this is working great. And Pretty much, yeah, yeah. kind of was. The, like the second banjo player didn't mind. And it's not in the interview right now, so what would you say? We <laughs> <laughs> I, it's Graham's. It's amazing how he plays with Steve. Like he, he they work together. Mm-hmm. He'll play like a harmony, or Steve's doing claw clamp, hammer. He'll do three finger, and some of the stuff he's playing, it's 
it's hard. It looks really it looks like it's hard, because <laughs> he has to find out where to play and where not to play and how to match Steve Perfect. He does a great job of it, so it's really cool. Yeah, it sounds great. So tell me about the name, the Steep Canyon Rangers, and how that came about. Well, uh, we tried to avoid that for a long time, telling the truth, but honestly, it came off a bottle of beer. Uh, Charles and I lived in. I lived, I lived with Charles somewhere in Chapel Hill, and there was a bottle of Steep Canyon Stout. And we put some tape over the word stout and the Red Rangers on it. Nice. That's how it happened. And we kept it, that name, <laughs> for some reason, forever. Not the beer. We drank the beer. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. But it's cool. It's lending it's lend itself to Steep Canyon or the Rangers or SCR. We have all kinds of nicknames on it. I got one more question for you, Woody, if you don't mind. Um, you founded the Mountain Song Festival. Yeah. And do you want to talk about that a little bit? I'd love to. Um, uh, me and a friend from Brevard and John Pelty, who was a touring musician, he was he was coming off the road and getting into promotion. And at the same time, I was in Brevard and got encouraged by actually by my mother to do a festival that raised money for the local Boys and Girls Club. And so we pulled some strings and got a great venue and kind of an outdoor amphitheater venue, and started the Mountain Song Festival. And the Rangers were the host band, and we spent. You know, Charles talks about it at every show. We, we just we take pride in it. We want it to be successful, and it's our way to kind of have one big benefit show every year. And we raised a quarter million dollars for the Boys and Girls Club. Wow! It's always the first weekend in September. I mean, the first weekend after Labor Day. Um, MountainSongFestival.com. But the big news is, is this year, well, next year, in 2013, we're going to take it on a cruise ship. We're doing mountain song at sea <coughs> nice. to uh, the Bahamas out of Miami. And wow. we've got like Del McCurry Band, a lot of the greatest bands in our genre, bands we love, mm -hmm. and uh, Punch Brothers and David Grisman. And, uh, the list is, is long, but it's that's mountainsongatsea.com. So we have two mountain songs now, which is. Will cool. it become an annual event also? Yeah, I think so. I guess it really depends on the success of the first annual, but if it's anything like the one we do in Brevard on land, Oh, that's awesome. I'm looking forward to the show tonight. Great. And, um, enjoy it. Thanks. Enjoy the morning. Thank you. So, yeah, we're going to probably see a little bit of it before we sound check. Oh, we're good. Yeah. You guys have a, good, yeah, have a great show. Hey, thanks, thanks a lot. lot. Thanks a lot. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Troy. You're welcome. Thank you. Appreciate it, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.